Hi guys, welcome to another video. So <clears throat> this is a follow-up. Now I've had the, the Quest Pro for uh, almost almost a week now. And so far, too long didn't read. I'm absolutely loving it. Uh, it's got a couple of bits that I would would change, but for the most part this is a real a real step up from what I'm used to with um the all the first generation headsets. So where to start? For sim racing, I think this is possibly one of the best that you can pick. Uh, the Valve Index comes quite close, but just the lower resolution is what really really get gets me loving this one. So if I look at apologies if I look a bit like I've been sweating, uh, I have. I've been playing Half Life Alex and uh, what do you call it, uh, Walking Dead. So they're quite uh, taxing on the head having this strapped here. So when you're wearing it, when you first put this on, I'll put it on now. Yep. Yep, nice and comfy. Tighten that up a tiny bit. You don't want to tighten it too much because it will get uncomfortable pretty quick because of it clamping your head. So, I mean, this is great. Now, something that I didn't expect was that's the full face blocker, um, light blocker. Now, um, this is how it comes out of the box. Got little bits of dust on it there. Now they charge fifty quid for this. I think honestly it should be more like a tenner because it feels extremely cheap. This should be included with it. I mean, let's let's be honest. The, in fact, the side blockers, which are just basically one of these but without the middle bit, I think they do a really good job. Now, what did surprise me a lot was. I actually enjoy using this without anything. I thought it was going to completely detract from the immersion. But honestly, when you've got this on and you haven't got either of those installed. I don't know how much you can see of my face, but it's honestly, it's actually quite amazing because you can I can see to type on my keyboard without even lifting my head up. Just yeah, I can see it right there. And when I've got the fan on, you feel the fan just breezing across your face. So when you're racing, it's brilliant because for whatever reason, it must be something in my brain that that just... How do I put this? When you start to drive, the gap seems to fall away and it's as if someone's just clicked full screen on your brain and you just focus on what you're seeing ahead and that that's how I've mostly been using it I've put a light blocker on because um, Half-Life Alex was and Walking Dead is great to be in the dark so um, yeah it is nice to be sealed off uh, but honestly 50 quid I mean come on this should not be 50 quid it's not even that comfy because it's so f like floppy and when you put this on your face and your you know your face touches this it kind of folds in it's literally so thin and floppy that you tend to have this so you, you have to go in with your fingers and try and pop it out it's quite hard to, to actually put it on properly so you know, I'll use it occasionally but I'm not, really not impressed with that Controllers, these are absolutely brilliant. They, they track w w without any problems, no matter what you're doing. They're not. I don't think I would pay go out and pay three hundred quid for a set of these just to use it with a Quest Two. But yeah, really, really nice controllers. Absolutely impressed. Very impressed with them. Battery life seems really good as well. Battery life on this, I've tried Walking Dead in standalone and I, I was in it for about an hour and then 
I was down to um, about it's like it's either fifty four or fifty six percent battery left in this. Uh, graphics wise, it didn't look that bad in standalone mode. It doesn't doesn't look as good. things look better when you're tethered straight to the PC. I tried the Air Link and wasn't impressed with that. I thought I would just, I wanted to give put this through its paces and try everything it can do. So the Air Link. It works, but I was literally stood next to my router, and I was still getting stutters in Half-Life Alex. It, it's much better with the um, the link cable. I mean, you don't have to buy the official link cable. There's plenty out there that will do the same job. Uh, but I thought I like to buy the official stuff to try them out when I when I get something new. Um, so comfort. <clears throat> when you first put it on. It's the most comfortable thing you've ever tried, um, you know, in terms of VR. It's great because you feel like it's just resting on your head, not clamping it. Um, that's good. It's like that for about half an hour. Then you start to feel the pressure here. And um, when I do, I'd say, a one hour race, um, it's a relief to get it off my head. I only need a couple of minutes break and then I can put it back on again and I'm away again. Uh, but yeah, for hours and hours in one stint would be, it does start to hurt there. Uh, the only time, like the other night, I was lying in bed, couldn't sleep, and I thought, oh, let's have a play around. So I put some documentaries on in here, yes, some space ones on the, about the space station. So I put it, <clears throat> I put it on my, on my head, and then I lay down on my bed, and, um, this was actually, didn't dig into my head or anything, it was uh, really comfy, so I was just looking up at the ceiling, and then you press and hold the Oculus button to centre your view. So I centred it so that I, it was on the ceiling, and then I sat there for a few hours watching um, these documentaries that I downloaded, and it, it there was no headache at all, because when you're lying back, the weight of it, is being taken by the the pillow that you that I was lying on. So, um, yeah, I sat there for hours, and I thought, wow, I could do hours at once in a race. But uh, yeah, when you're upright, you start to feel it after about an hour, and yeah, I needed a little break. Uh, so, I'm going to try a few different products to make it comfier. One of them um, I've ordered should be here hopefully tomorrow. It's basically a uh, it replaces these with um, thicker padding and a bigger area to rest on you. And it also has a strap going over the top. So uh, quite looking forward to that because uh, that will be, that should be it. should be able to wear this, uh, you know, much, much longer. Um, but yeah, so comfort, brilliant and a headache after too long. So what's next? The audio, these tiny... These tiny little speakers that, that are on the side here, I thought they were going to be absolute garbage because I remember when I first bought the, the Rift S, I put it on and I thought, whew, that's, uh, that was a, a bit of a stinker, that one audio-wise, so you needed headphones on. Um, so luckily these are great. They, they actually kick out a reasonable amount of bass considering they're open air and not actually hovering over your ear. Not as good as the Index's audio, but more than acceptable, really good. You can, it's got two headphone jacks, one on each side, so the official in-ear earphones are split into two pieces, so one each ear. Uh, I might try them just to see what they're like. I imagine they'll probably be all right, like, but they're another 50 quid, so you keep adding stuff to this, the extras, and it becomes you know, much more expensive. So that's for the that's the audio. Uh, oh yeah, if you want to use over ear headphones, it's not going to be easy because because of the halo head strap. It's relatively thick, and it's on your head. And you go and put some in ears over it. They don't they don't seal because of the headband. Uh, so you really need in ears. Well, there's a company that I've noticed is making a head strap that goes over here, and it's got two plastic pieces, um, about 
don't know, two inches tall, and it basically cups your ear so that the sound can't escape. It basically hits the cup and goes in your ear. And I thought, is that really going to work? But when you put this on and you're listening to something, if you go like this, so that you're cupping the audio straight into your ear, because audio is just air, it's just travelling through the air, if you do that, you would all of a sudden have really booming bass. It sounds more like the index. So that could be a neat thing. It was on Etsy, I noticed it. So I might try one of them. Um, What's next? So the pass-through um, is brilliant. You get up and walk off and it just automatically goes to the pass-through. And you can see your surroundings. So you can you can just walk about. And then when you turn to, return to your Guardian area, you go back in, in VR. Um, the pass-through quality, it's more like a webcam. It's not like HD. It's not like this now, um, this camera looking at me now. That's not the kind of image that you get. It's uh, quite grainy, but it's functional. It does its job really well. So so there's that. So we've talked about some of the, uh, some of the standalone games. I've only tried a few standalone games. Um, what should we do next? Should we... Load up, I'll show you how you launch everything. Now, what I need to do, I need to start the headset. You press and hold the button. And it takes, um, yeah, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds to boot up. And then what I'll do, I'll switch the camera to like that. Hopefully this will... Hopefully this will work okay. Sometimes when you go to take it off, if you hold the strap, you end up hitting the volume or... Um, right, so I'm looking at the pass-through now. How do I show you this? Right, let's put on Oculus Mirror and hopefully... Hoping Oculus Mirror comes up on the display. So I'll just start this. So I have to just uh, allow the PC to use. Confirm the Guardian. Enable Quest Link. So once you've enabled Quest Link, this is just using the cable. So it's now loading up the Oculus Store. Can you see? Um, There we go. That's it. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Right, so you should be able to see what I'm seeing. Now, so when you're on the Quest Store, I've got this set to switch itself into standby at 15 minutes. But as soon as you lift it off your head, it sends the screen blank. And then when you put it back on, it should. There we go. And we're away. So it is now... If I switch to this, uh, sorry, let's go back to the. So what I'm looking at here is what you're seeing now on the actual screen on my monitor. It's showing me the the Oculus st Store. So using this in Steam VR wasn't that great because you're running Steam and the Oculus Home at the same time. You can't close down Oculus and just launch Steam. It, it doesn't work that way. So I've been... Uh, there, there was some stutters and the frame rate wasn't as good. But playing Steam VR games on the Oculus is much better. So what you got to do is you have to go to your library in Steam and go to a set of courses, for example launch it once in Steam VR and then when you next load up the Oculus now if I use the this you see over here this is um, ACC it'll appear there in your Oculus store so you don't have to have Steam VR running so if I click that Go for a little drive around. 
takes a moment to launch. And there we go, it's launched without Steam VR. Now I've mapped in a set of cores you can map a button to recenter your HMD, so I've got that on the wheel. So if I look to the right, press it, it's there. And I look there, it's there now. Let's just double check. Sorry, bear with me. Sorry about that, I clicked the wrong thing. The wrong scene. Okay, so. <laughs> really sorry about that. Right, so I'll do that again. So if I, if I look over like that. You, you can see I can recenter it. So. Here we go. Alright, so that's centered. And let's go for a little little drive round. Let's just make it into a quick race. And let's go into a different yeah, let's go to Zambort, that's one I need practice on. Okay, so here we are in the car. Let's just load up the default setup. Stay double file. Right then, I've got the settings set pretty high. Like even with the 4090, you can't run everything on Epic. I wish you could, but uh, just turn that down a bit so that I can uh, hear myself talk. In fact, I'll show you what my graphic settings are now, just in case it's something you might want to see. Um, so I've got it set to 72 FPS. It'll run at 90, but I have to knock things down a little bit. So we are um, resolution is irrelevant. Uh, that's you know just what it, if I boot it up in single screen, that's what I've got it set to at the moment because I haven't I haven't got the triples enabled for the moment. Uh, resolution scale is greyed out because I've got DLSS, uh, sorry, FSR enabled. So let's switch to DLSS. Um, I've been testing them both. So this is where I'm at with my settings. I didn't want to have the mirror quality set low because it looks awful you know it's much better to be able to see what's in your mirror i look in the mirror quite a lot so pixel density i've got it up to 120 the higher you take that the clearer it is and it really if you crank that up to 150 it looks stunning but the frame rates in the toilet you know there's there's no chance virtual to rescale that changes how big everything appears around you so as you increase that the car kind of gets bigger which is kind of weird. Um, so advanced uh, volumetric fogs disabled. I don't remember doing that. Let's have a little bit of that. Um, car level of detail. That has a big impact on how good it looks. If you take that down to say 50%. Um, it only renders other cars wheels when you're really close to them, as they get to say 50 feet away, the wheels disappear, it's very strange. So I don't like to take that down. All right, and so this is with DLSS running. So you get a slightly better frame rate with it. Left. 
So I know you're seeing kind of a reproduction of this so you don't get the... It's really hard to put across how, how immersive VR is. Like looking at cars when they're next to you, everything looks so much bigger. It just looks so realistic. I still haven't got to grips with the handling on 1.9 yet, but I'm getting there. Car on the left. Clear on the left. Kind of like the feel of this Lambo. Once, some of the, once I get some setups for it, I'll probably start doing some online racing with it. Just about to get closer to the Bentley then to see if I could uh, show you how much bigger it looks than the other cars. The Ferrari looks quite tiny compared to the, uh, the Bentley. You can really see the fur of the Alcantara on the dash. It, it, you feel like you'd reach out and just brush it with your hand. New Porsche handles amazing on this track. Not so good on others, but uh, once some more setups come up, the ones that are out at the moment are a bit terrible. So finding the default aggressive ones are probably the best starting point for the new cars. I still haven't got around to try other games yet. I was going to do that before making this video, but I just can't stop tinkering with uh, with this. It's just so addictive. You can you can change the camera shape uh, in some ways. Show you what I mean in this set, um, not in this one, sorry, it's in the view settings. So we've got the camera and then we've got motion. So lock to horizon, if you have it 100%, then the, the game's view is fixated on the horizon. So when you're going up or down a hill, you'll it'll do that on its own. If you have it all the way down like that, then you're locked to the car's movements which can be a bit hard to stomach on bumpy tracks this isn't too bumpy this track so I'm not sure which is the best way to do it I've been driving with it set to 50% This is on zero. See on a screen this Lambo looks pretty bland because all you're looking at is this little square display. When you're actually in the car, in VR, you look around, everything's bright green and just, you know, you know you're in a Lambo because of how crazy it looks inside. So this is with the lock to horizon set to zero. Now let's try the other way. Um, oh, I've gone into the wrong thing again. View settings, motion. So 
So this is where the car riding over bumps won't make your head shake as much. Having it set up like this is easier on my brain. What it's like on the screen, I'll have to have a look at this video after. Mirror qualities, uh, I mean I haven't got it on Epic, but it does look pretty decent. Just if you drop it down any lower than this, it looks really grainy and awful. We're so lucky to have such amazing sim racing experiences available. Spoilt for choice on the PC VR, it's just it makes you feel so lucky. Back in the 80s and 90s, we only had things like you know, outrunning the arcade or stunt car racer on the Commodore 64, hard driving when that came into the arcade. Car on the left. Clear on the left. To have this, this quality of racing in your home. Makes you feel so lucky. Lambo and the Bentley getting racy. You can really see the depth perception, you can really see exactly how far you are away from each car, so having close racing. really can get close to other cars without touching them unless you make a mistake obviously yeah this is amazing and the index is, an, is a good one as well I mean the field of view of this it's acceptable it's pretty good um, the field of view isn't as good as the index I mean, most most headsets aren't as good as the Index for field of view. And Valve do have the the Valve Deckard, it's called. I don't know if that's its code name or if it's uh, going to be the release name. Their next headset is on the on the horizon, and you know they're going to knock it out of the park. So that'll be really exciting to watch. I know people watching streams of me doing this might feel a bit sick watching this on the screen. So, I'm only going to do some races in VR. The majority will still be on screens so I can stream, especially the endurance races. But I will do some races like this. I'll have to see what looks better and try and make it less... Uh, I don't want to make you guys feel ill. That's why this is just, uh, you know, a single player drive around. And, uh, so yeah, that is about it. So I hope that looked um, all right for you. I can't think there's anything else um, really show you. Replays look interesting because you feel like you just stood in the grass at the side of the track. Spent a fair bit of time the other night on Kyle Army, stood by a crane, just watching the cars go by and yeah, if you've got a few people you know, to meet up with online you could all go to the same replay and have a picnic. Even put your fan on to feel like there's wind blowing past. 
and now I'm getting a bit nerdy now. So that's it, you shut down the game as you normally do. And then we're back here. Back in the Oculus store. Or Oculus launcher rather. And that's it. And then it goes to standby. Well it's not really standby, it just switches off the display when you do that. Standby happens in uh, at 15 minutes. So yeah, I definitely wouldn't buy this unless you desperately need to get rid of the light because hopefully there'll be other solutions out before long. Um, more comfortable ones preferably. Even if it was um, a fabric. I think if they did a fabric kind of cover. Let's go to... There we go. Yep. Yeah. What else is there to talk about? There's a couple of other things still. Uh, the lenses. Absolutely brilliant. Everything's so clear, almost right to the very edge. Everything's just crystal clear. It's really, really impressive. And uh, the IPD adjustment. I wish they had a little wheel or something to adjust it. What you have to do is you have to touch the edges of the lenses and move them in, uh, in and out. Uh, which works fine. Uh, you do occasionally move them a bit when you go to pull it over your head. If you knock it or accidentally hit it with your thumb, you might move them a little bit. Not a big deal, but um, yeah, it would have been nice to have a wheel. I like the way um, HTC do with the like on the Vive, just a wheel to turn. Yeah, it's um, but it's just a minor gripe. I'm really nitpicking here, to be honest. So. Anything else? No, just the lenses are great. There's no god rays. Um, something I've noticed quite bad on the with the Fresnel lenses on the uh, it, the Vive and the Index, especially the Index. It was pretty bad. You had the god rays because of all the the, the lenses, the lens rings. Uh, a, I mean, the other day when I first decided to do a VR race with it, I put it on and I thought, "Is this me?" Yeah, uh, you know, I felt like there was light coming in, reflecting, even though my face was sealed. I thought it was the ring light, but turned it off and, uh, and it wasn't. And then I remembered then, that, yeah, it's just God rays. It's just a natural thing of Fresnel lenses, so there's there's none of that there. Reading text is just brilliant. Um, I haven't tried the virtual desktop yet for the uh, wireless gaming, but the the Quest Link, uh, the Air Link um, software. I wasn't impressed with that because it's just not a smooth experience. It's, it's convenient, you know, you can play your, your PC games without being tethered to a cable, but I much prefer the cable, it's it's just a better experience. But from what I've um, heard, one of my friends uh, that I race with says that virtual desktop is much better. He says that's uh, way better than any of the other methods of... Um, he was doing it on the Pico and he said it works really great on the Pico 4. Might try one of them in the for future because for the money they look amazing. So I think that is about all that I can think of. That's everything I've experienced so far. Walking Dead, I'll tell you a little thing. <laughs> the other night, I thought I'd try it in standalone mode. So I'm in the living room. I move the couch out of the way so I've got a bit of space and I'm just playing along and at the very start you're going through like a little graveyard bit and then there was a there was a body or a zombie just sort of draped look you know dead looked dead hanging over like a little fence so so I went, went up to it and I, I just gently reached out I thought can I like lift his head up just to see if he's gonna you know spring to life or not and my dog thought because I was holding the controller out like this my dog thought I was giving him a treat so he leaped up and grabbed my fingers. <sighs> my God, I jumped, I screamed. So that was, that was a terrifying moment. <laughs> so yeah, don't ha don't have your dog in the room with you when you're playing uh, VR games because if they jump on you or grab you, you're gonna jump. You really are gonna jump, especially if you got a spaniel because they always think you're giving them a treat as soon as you do this. Uh, they think, oh, what you got there? Uh, anyway, 
so that's it. That's uh, that's where I'm at at the moment. I'll I, in a few months of using it, uh, I'll do a follow up, um, and I'll do uh, sometime next week. I'll do another video of the new headband and pads that I'm gonna try. I'll see what it's like. I've got quite high hopes for them because they I can't remember what it was called uh, the make, but I'll I'll do a little unboxing of it and. And uh, I'll, I'll try it out because I think it's going to make a huge difference. Uh, not that it's uncomfy now, just don't have it too tight. Um, but like when you, you need to have it tight enough when you're in something like Half-Life Alex because you do, you know, you're looking down and you're looking all around, so you don't want it falling off your head. Um, so it will uh, give you a headache after a while. Not the back, the back's fine. Just, just here, you end up with a, a red patch. I don't know if I've... Um, Got a patch now, but that was only a few minutes. So that is about all I can think of. And thank you very much for watching. I'll do, uh, I'll do a, a race sometime soon. I might do one tonight in VR. And then at the weekend, I've got two races coming up, two new leagues starting. Um, we're going to be using them on, <coughs> using the screens for them because it's going to be quite competitive. I want to try and perform you know as best that I can so I'll uh, I'll leave you to it now and hope you have a nice day if you got any questions about the headset then just let me know and I shall see you soon cheers for watching see you later